Are you looking to make your own yogurt, but you don't want to invest in any kind of expensive equipment, keep your oven running all night long? I have got the perfect solution for you today. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. Uh, today I'm working in the kitchen. I'm going to be working on making some yogurt. Um, I've got some milk that's just getting real close to the expiration date. Got quite a bit of it, so I need to use some of it up. And I'm just about out of yogurt, so that kind of kills two birds with one stone. Gives me a way to preserve this milk, keep it from going bad, use it up and also gives me more yogurt. So yogurt can be incredibly complicated to make or you can make it incredibly simple. Really, there's only two things you need to make, well, I should say three things. You need a starter, some kind of lactobacillus bacteria. There's a couple of different kinds of bacteria that, that go into that. You can buy a starter or you can just use yogurt. If you're gonna be using leftover yogurt, make sure that you use yogurt that has live and active cultures and, not, and one that's not flavored. You don't want any kind of sugar artificial sweeteners, any of those kinds of things in there. You just want plain yogurt. So that's what I've got here. I've got, oh, a couple tablespoons of it. You're going to need probably about two, three tablespoons for a quart of milk. Um, you can, you know, expand that up or shrink it down, whatever. The more yogurt you put in there, the kind of the tangier it's going to be. So if you go over three tablespoons of yogurt to a quart, it's just going to have a tangier flavor to it. It's not going to change the consistency or anything like that. Um, of course, you're going to need some milk. Um, I like to use whole milk for making yogurt. I believe yogurt is best when it's whole fat, not made with skim milk or any of those things, but you can make it with skim milk if you want to. And then you need some way to incubate it. All you're going to do basically is pasteurize the milk first, then we're going to bring it down to a, a, a safe temperature, which is about 110 to 115 degrees, somewhere right there. Mix in our starter and incubate it at about 110, 115 degrees for eight to 12 hours, somewhere right around in there. You could do that a number of ways. They make you know, uh, yogurt makers with, that will keep that constant temperature for you. You could do it in your oven and you could just do it at a low setting. You could do it in a crock pot on the counter, uh, a, a food dehydrator. I mean, there's lots of different ways that you could do it. Heck, you could probably even do it in your incubator if you wanted to, but I don't know that that's a very clean environment to do it in. So let's get started. What I'm going to be using is just a Stanley thermos. This thing does a great job. Um, it holds temperature for well over eight to 10 hours. So it's perfect for making yogurt in. And it's not, I mean, it's super cheap. It works great. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, I've got some water boiling here on the stove and I'm going to pour that in my thermos. I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, to kind of sterilize the thermos, kill any kind of bacteria that might be in there. Shouldn't be any, but still. And the other one really more importantly is to kind of pre-warm the thermos so it's hot when the yogurt goes into it and it holds that temperature a little bit better. So my water is already to a boil here and let's see if I can pour that in my thermos without making a mess all over the counter. And look at that, it worked out pretty well actually. And then I'm just going to cap this off, set it to the side while I'm getting everything else ready. All right, so to get my yogurt all ready, the first thing I'm going to do is measure out how much milk I need. And I'm going to do about a quart of yogurt. Um, that's about how much my thermos will hold. And it's just a good measurement. You don't have to be exact on this measurement. If you go just a little over a quart, then you go a little over a quart. I'm going to add that to a uh, pot on the stove. We're going to have to bring this up to about... 160 to 190 degrees to pasteurize it and make sure we've got any kind of bad bacteria killed off. Okay, now we do not want to add the yogurt to our milk yet. We need to, like I said, pasteurize it. And if you bring it up to 190 degrees with the yogurt mixture in there, you're going to kill all the bacteria in there. You're not going to end up making yogurt in the end. So we need to pasteurize the milk first. And uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to turn my uh, stove on. I've got a thermometer right here. And you do need to stir it constantly to keep the milk from uh, scorching, of course. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Again, nothing real special about this. You don't need to bring it to a boil. You just need about 160 degrees, 165 degrees, somewhere right around in there. And uh, just hold it there for 30 seconds or a minute maybe, and then you can kill the heat. And that's all, that's all we're going to work on here. But it's going to take a minute to get this up there. Make sure you use a uh, thermometer. You want to be able to tell. Right now, this stuff's pretty cold. So we're looking at... Yeah, only about 80 degrees in there right now. But again, you, you want to stir it. You don't want your milk to uh, scorch, so. OK, 
Okay, that's about 160, about 165. I'm going to let it go ahead and uh, climb just a little bit higher, probably give it to about 170, 180, uh, more or less just to give it time so I don't have to fiddle with the temperature. Needs to probably, uh, you know, like I said, 30 seconds, a minute, something like that to make sure it's pasteurized. And then when it gets up to about 180, that should be 30 seconds, a minute above 160, and I'll just kill the heat and take it off the heat at that point. All right, there we go, 180 degrees. Let's set that off to the side so it starts to cool down now. And I'm going to keep stirring it for just a minute or two more. So the next step is to let this cool down. We need to get it down to, oh, 115 degrees, 110, 115, somewhere right around in there. That, that's going to take a little while right now. We're at about 100 and uh, close to 150 degrees, 160 still. So uh, you could speed this up if you wanted to. Um, you could set it in a sink with some uh, cold water around the base of the pot, and that'll cool it down. You just, like I said, you don't want it to get too far too cold. You want it to stay right about 115 degrees. If it gets too cold, it's no big deal. Just warm it back up to 115 degrees. But uh, no sense in you sitting here watching this. I'm just stirring it for a few seconds until the temperature starts to drop down and doesn't and you know stops rising just to keep the uh, milk from scorching. And once that happens, I can just walk away and give it some time. Probably take, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes for it to cool down. All right, so that's been cooling on the stove and it's down to Oh, about 115 degrees. That's about where we want to keep it. 115, 110, somewhere right around in there. So I'm going to take some and pour it right into my yogurt container. That's with my leftover yogurt. And that gives me something to kind of stir together, thin this yogurt out so it'll spread out through the rest of the milk much better. Won't just be a big clump right in the middle. So I'm going to stir that down. And while I'm doing that, I want to work fairly quickly here because I don't want this to cool too much. I want to keep it, you know, warm, but and then that just goes right into the uh right into the milk. And again, it's just a couple tablespoons of yogurt, probably 2-3 tablespoons to a quart, something like that. Stir that around, make sure that it gets evenly distributed. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and go empty out my thermos so I can uh, get it ready to uh, pour the uh, yogurt mixture into. All right, and then from there, pretty simple. I'm just going to uh, pour my yogurt into my thermos, see if I can do that without spilling a ton of it. Put the cap on. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here when I do that, probably. And uh, set that to the side and let that incubate for 10, 12 hours, somewhere right around in there. 10 is probably fine, 8 to 10, something like that. Um, just depends on how the rest of the day goes as to what time I'll get to it. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning right now, so. You know, somewhere around nine, you know, nine o'clock tonight, I should be able to uh, go ahead and open this up, and we'll come back when this is done incubating and show you what it looks like at that point. All right, so this has been sitting for I don't know about ten and a half hours, and it's getting kind of late. I normally let it go a little bit longer, but I want to get it taken care of. So, uh, not really much to this point here or this part here right now. Just uh, open everything up, and uh, let's see if you can see that on camera or not. It. I mean, it looks like yogurt in there. Ah, let's see if we can show it. Looks like yogurt. So I'm going to dump it out and pour it into the yogurt container I was using before. Now, you might notice that the first thing that's going to come off is a little bit of a clear liquid. That is the whey. And it's kind of hard to get going.
But we have yogurt. Now you will notice this is kind of a, it's kind of lumpy. It's not nearly the consistency of what you're probably used to with store-bought yogurt. We're gonna put this in the fridge and it will set up a little bit. If you want to, uh, you know, get it a little bit thicker, you can always strain it through some cheesecloth, strain the whey off, that's the clear liquid. And you can use that for, you know, bread making, for feeding your animal. I mean, all kinds of things you can use whey for. But I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the fridge, and then we'll take a look at it in the morning and see how well it's set up at that point. All right, so this has been sitting in the fridge all night long, and it should be set up and ready to go. And uh, let's get a closer view of this. Let's show you what it kind of looks like. Um, it looks like yogurt. I mean, it's a little bit lumpier, probably not quite as smooth as what you would see like store-bought yogurt, but looks like yogurt. So let's see how it uh, how it compares. You can see the consistency probably not quite as thick as store-bought yogurt. I mean, you let that sit in the fridge a little bit longer. And uh, let me get closer to the camera here. We'll show you what I'm talking about. Let that show in the fridge or sit in the fridge just a little bit longer. Hopefully it will focus. There we go. And you can see probably just a little bit thinner, not quite as thick as what you would see with store-bought yogurt. But again, letting it sit in the fridge a little bit longer, it will thicken up a little bit more. Also, if you want it thicker, again, or less tangy, because this is just plain yogurt, it is it's pretty good. It tastes like yogurt. It's nice and creamy, but it is pretty tangy. Again, it's just plain yogurt. There's no sweeteners or anything like that in there. If you do want to take some of that tanginess out of it, make it a little bit milder, and even thicken it up a little bit more, just strain it through some cheesecloth, strain the whey off of it, and it'll thicken up a little bit more. But this is yogurt. That's is super easy to make. Nothing difficult about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something today maybe. Let me know down below if you have a good trick or something you really like to stir into yogurt. Thank you so much for watching. As always, God bless.